Hi guys, my name is Maria. I'm a graphic and UX designer. I'm also a tarot reader and a big Porsche girl. And this video is for me very experimental because I'm willing to start my YouTube channel. And out of many things that I can talk about, I really want to just talk about my life. And this specific video, I want to talk about very personal thing to me. And it is my relationships, uh, my personal life, and what I went through for the past two years. And I felt like my experience may help a lot of you to realize maybe you're not at a very bad place in your life, or maybe you need to do something to improve yourself in this sense. And uh, one of the biggest things I want to share is that, um, okay, what was happening for these two years? First of all, two years ago, my boyfriend and my ex broke up with me. He was a Russian guy and I'm Russian too. Um, and uh, we dated, it was kind of like a little bit nostalgia dating because we moved together to the US. Uh, we didn't live together though, but we studied in universities, like in, uh, well, not neighboring states, but like kind of nearby. And uh, to me, that was my first serious relationship. And I was very, I felt like I'm so much in love with him. And for me, it was also a part of my home that was near me that I missed. And uh, since I started my life here from the scratch, I kind of became dependent on this love and this relationship. I don't think it, it was like true love but like it was some kind of love that i felt uh, or could call love at the point when we dated and to me that was an example of how us women we have a tendency to emotionally t uh, just tie ourselves to this very guy and not that this guy is perfect or anyhow feeding our life and he may be very abusive and toxic which my boyfriend ex uh, was not really, but there was a lot of red flags as I now look back at it. And to me, all of it is mostly the idea that to us women, we get used to things and we're like, oh, I can just live with this. I can get used to this. So we just close our eyes and uh, because it's so hard to walk away, at least for me. So what happened then is to me, that was a time of my big changes. Since we broke up, I decided I will move to a different city and kind of start again. And I did. And uh, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. That's where I live now. And I absolutely loved it. For me, it was like a breath of fresh air. And uh, I felt like, oh my God, now I'm going to have a new life, new awesome apartment, uh, new boyfriend, obviously. Although at that time, I wasn't like, oh my God, I need a boyfriend urgently. That happened later. I was like, I'm willing to know people. And of course, as you move to a new country or a new city, the easiest way to meet people is Tinder or maybe Hinge or Bumble. I'm sure most of you have done it at least once because I mean, like you don't just like go and ask people about themselves. It's fucking hard. Um, so I started talking to a few guys and eventually two weeks after I moved to Atlanta, that was, july 2022 so almost like year and a half ago i met an amazing man and uh although all the trash that happened later it's like just unbelievable but when i look at him even now i can tell i don't know anyone that's successful in his age group he's extremely successful handsome um and in my own perception, he was subjectively perfect. And as we finally went on a date, it was like a Cinderella story, my favorite, because uh, I think I'm gonna make um, the, uh, I'm gonna put the photo of the house that we saw on our date. And he took me to see this house and I'm like, this is awesome this is a freaking castle and i am a hopeless romantic so to me it was like a whole new adventure romance and i was falling in love although when i was going on that date i was like no nothing is gonna happen like we're here just to be friends of course mm -hmm. uh so eventually yeah the date was we were driving in the uh boxer porsche so it was like amazing and like my story about porsches i'm gonna record a whole other video about it because it's a whole different story big part of my life as i told you i'm a porsche girl and part of it is the fault of this very guy 
so let's call him Mr. B. Uh, so Mr. B uh, organized the perfect date. It was a summer, starry night. Uh, I could see the stars because we were driving in the forest. Uh, that's where the like luxury neighborhood here in Atlanta is. That's where we saw all the houses. And since I just moved here, to me it was pure magic. So uh, eventually, um, it was like awesome. We then drank the very expensive champagne in awesome crystal glass, uh, glasses. It was just to me like a real, um, I don't know, melodrama movie from Netflix or just some made up story that was actually happening. So like my excitement right now when I am thinking about it is still same because to me it seemed like impossible. But like, of course, there is nothing like pretty about the ending. It was just like the happy beginning, but no happy end. Spoiler! Eventually, the guy, he just ghosted me. <laughs> uh, and it turned out, like, to make it a little more fair, he was not really ghosting me. He just like chose his work. And uh, I realized this person is not like emotionally available or capable of loving because job is all he cares about, truly. And then at some point he told me that it is actually what he like lives for. This is what he cares about and uh, relationship would never be first place for him. Well, at least now. So it's been uh, almost a year and a half since I know him and spoiler, I still uh, talk to him time to time, but more like, hey, dude, like, what's up? Um, and he made some attempts to meet me again. We met a few times, but like all the time, same story. So it's just like this unfortunate scenario. So at some point I realized, well, I don't need this in my life. And uh, then there was a few other stories. Uh, I have a very trash story that happened to me. It's insane. So another guy went on a date with, um, he was a crypto trader and uh, we like kind of linked but i felt like well yeah he likes me what what else like nothing else so he made me invest in crypto and then he turned out to be a scammer and uh i don't want to tell you how much money i lost because it's a lot like i would better put it as a down payment for my porsche you know so but that was a very bitter lesson to learn uh, but you know life happens i learned tried to learn from my mistakes um so that was a one uh, another one unfortunate scenario and at that point in life and that was uh, fall last year i still believed i can have a great relationship it's just like unfortunate and mess, but I'm gonna go over it. Like it took me four months to get over this Mr. B guy um, because I really fell in love with him or I thought so. At least I had a lot of feelings that I could not express because I knew the guy's freaking cold stone. Um, not that he would like reject me, but he would just politely de explain me that it's not happening. So I'm like, <laughs> very silly, unfortunate. Um, and finally, it was winter when kind of things I thought started bending a little better and um, I met another guy and he was visiting Atlanta, he was from New York um, and I kind of really liked our dates, we had two dates here and uh, I even was supposed to go to New York to celebrate Christmas with him and um, this is my very much personal wish that I really want to come true someday hopefully this winter please I'm doing my best to make it happen uh, I want to celebrate uh, Christmas with my man in the middle of New York being uh, near Rockefeller Center or in Times Square looking at all these gorgeous decorations at Rockefeller Center Christmas tree skating like drinking something like hot tea or chocolate and she's like i mean this is just so magical to me and uh i even have it in my wish list for this year so let's see if it happens well at least i don't mind like if it's not new york if it happens with my man oh my god mm -hmm. i'm not dating now just in case like i'm telling you i'm just hoping like some miracle happens in one month i mean everything is possible you know um and finally yes but this guy also got busy so this is the curse of my life the guys get busy they ghost me and i'm like this is not normal at first i'm like coincidence coincidence maybe not coincidence but still at this point i'm like no this freaking is not coincidence 
cool, not good. This is a scenario that I went into because of my childhood traumas, because of some things that I just closed my eyes on and I need to change that. And today was my first therapy session to get rid of this thing and to become a little more aware of why it's happening and change it. Um, so thank you so much, thank you so much. Yes, I'm working on myself. And uh, after New Year's, um, kind of it was really uh, devastated because um, it was almost a year since I was single. And I mean, guys, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, like I'm pretty, I'm smart. Uh, I'm taking well care of myself, but why? Why, why in the city with the six, more than 6 million people, I could not find one, like it's impossible. Um, but to me, it was like, okay, maybe that was not the right one. Maybe life has something better for me. But it was more like, you know, this like positive thinking, but it is a toxic positive thinking. When you don't solve the problem, you just cover it. And eventually, it only hurts more. That's what happened with me. And uh, at the beginning of 2023, life um, made me an amazing gift. It made me... Uh, know about people who are clairvoyants. I just somehow got contacts of them and I'm like I need to contact them to ask about the session because I'm freaking devastated. I need answers And for those who don't know, I'm very very spiritual. I believe in reincarnation, souls, karma um, Like higher powers uh, That's why I do tarot because to me this is such a big part of our life that only some people like are actually aware of but like you know knowing about certain things really helps to me this helps i don't say you have to believe in it you choose what you believe in but to me it was a healing a kind of thing to know certain things because of the tools i had and finally i went to one clairvoyant and she really helped me she did some kind of energy healing and um i still recommend it to all my friends because she's amazing she now lives in montenegro uh she's russian um and she practices this for 20 years and she also gave me some answers to whether i'm gonna have men a relationship is everything fine she's like say she said that like as i go now everything shall be fine i'm like perfect uh then uh, I went to another clear one because I'm a freaking like, you know, experimenter. I love trying new things and one is never enough. Uh, so I went to another clear one. He was more straightforward. All the questions I asked, he answered me in like 20 minutes. So I knew like when I'm getting married, if I'm getting like, if I'm meeting the man first place, when I'm meeting him, uh, when I'm getting married likely. Um, where I'm gonna leave or where is it more likely I'm gonna leave and be successful and what are gonna be my career paths and like if I'm gonna get a visa to stay here and all of that so it was pretty interesting experience you know I knew even more than I wanted to know in a way so I was like oh wow okay this is interesting um and finally um after even first clairvoyant uh I felt much better uh, I met my best friend here, uh, he's an amazing artist, uh, we're still very good friends and uh, to me it was a blessing, it was almost like life became a little brighter and then um, after second clairvoyant it kind of, the trend continued, uh, I met another guy who I don't talk to now unfortunately but it was still a great experience and finally uh, I went to third clairvoyant and it was also a completely different experience she's one of the kind of women uh, because uh, she uh, uses beans to predict the future and she's very pastoral in the way she describes things and also she can tell you a bit of the timeline how things are gonna happen to me she was the most helpful of all and I would say I felt some kind of relation to everything she said and it was more like a proof of my words rather than something I didn't know, although she told me some things that I didn't know and I was so happy to hear them. Um, not to make it too sweet, uh, all the clear ones also tell you what are the possible obstacles on the way, so it's not like everything's gonna be fine, you're gonna be rich and loved, no. The path is not straight, they just tell you about things that are going to happen or likely to happen. But like, you still do the job, okay? Uh, so it's just to be sure you're in the right direction, you know? So in May, 
it was a kind of big uh, turning point to me because I met a guy who I truly felt um, at least romance and sympathy to. I really liked him. Like he is also a Porsche guy, so there was like another layer of us being uh, kind of more in contact with each other, understanding each other better, having having similar interests. It was like almost half a month that everything was fine, and then. He said that he doesn't see it as a romance uh, continuing being like this and i'm like okay fine it was bitter to me to accept this but i was like i'm not gonna blame him because still what i feel to him is very beautiful and i don't want it to be ruined in a way but i can try to change my feelings to go over romance and just keep you know the unconditional love i can feel to him as a friend as a human being and that's where eventually we went to spoiler he's still my good friend uh and i uh, really appreciate he stays in my life um, a lot of great moments I had have and will have with him Porsche stays as a very much touching point here but then it was summer and summer in New York and I had I'm not gonna lie high expectations but it didn't really work out because to me the summer was still disappointing as I I thought I'm gonna meet some special man up there and it's gonna be like, you know, the summer romance or maybe even more than that, but it never happened. And I was like, okay, now something is clearly off, like super off. No man would try to like invite me on a date. Uh, eventually I went on a few dates, but it was at the very end of my stay there and I was very disappointed. And uh, that's when I discovered my favorite uh, women in spiritual world, my uh, little protector, my magician, and she is a magician. She does white magic rituals and I do them pretty often and I can see the effect on my life, a positive effect, that's important. So she, uh, we talked and she discovered that I was under the dark magic spell and that is partially why my relationships were so off i'm like well this is a game changer okay um so ever since she um released the spell from me uh i felt better i started going on dates i felt like i get more attention and it's getting definitely better there is a positive change then i moved back to atlanta from new york i know such an eventful life even i didn't tell you last year i also went on an interstate trip this is like a whole other story <laughs> i have so many and eventually yeah eventually i um went to atlanta and i thought okay now i went through like the fire the water all of the weird things that could happen to me i'm so wise i know everything i did my best i solved all the problems all the obstacles but here we go me almost at the end of this very controversial year with a lot of falls and wins and positive and negative experiences and i realized um there is some things that we cannot fix with spells or cards or simply knowing something sometimes you just have to go to therapy and tell your therapist hey there is a scenario, there is something bad happening in my life and it's not stopping, like how do I stop it? And that's what um, I started doing eventually, thanks to my very good friend uh, from Russia who been with me yesterday when I had a huge emotion downfall where I didn't believe I really want to do anything at all, um, try to solve this and continue doing at least anything. Um, but she convinced me I shall go to therapy, recommended me a therapist, and today I had my first session, which went very good. Next one is, I have two next week, so I'll let you know guys how it goes. Also follow my Instagram, that's where I share a lot of these things, insights, and like what I do daily and what I'm up to, my thoughts, my wins and fails, it's just like super interactive, please follow eventually i'm at the point where i'm like well i tried to do different um practices spiritual not spiritual but at the end of the day i'm at the point where i'm like this is the problem the negative experiences which became an ash 
in my brain which um, then uh, make me feel like I'm not deserving a relationship I would never find my man I would never be happy be loved I would never get what, what I want because my standards are so high to me like where do I find this man but the reality is that I'm surrounded by men by wonderful people um, I go to a lot of events and they're social um, and I have a very but a very wonderful friends group right here in Atlanta who make uh, networking events and that helps me to meet more and more people and potentially some of them can be this very person I'm looking for and maybe I have to think a little less about it so these are my insights of uh, almost two years being single it wasn't easy but it was um, I don't want to say it was fun because it wasn't but I learned a lot and I think this experience is in just invaluable it's so important um i learned so much and i understood a lot about myself and uh i think you know sometimes it's really just all about okay um just go see the problem try to figure out where it came from and you rewrite it so now it doesn't bother you you don't feel what you feel and you're a little more adequate in a way so thank you for listening. This is my first video in this new kind of format. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Put a thumb up and please follow me for more videos which are going to be coming. Let me know if you like this live format um, where I'm just talking to you and sharing my insights. Thank you for being here for me, guys. Love you.